right, welcome to the Testimonies of God. My name is Minister Kim Thomas. I am the co-host, uh, Laura Savinsky, she's the host. She's not here today. Uh, however, we have an awesome man of God and, and a, hey, the Lord is awesome. You know, I'm just honored that when I called him on such a short notice that um, he was ready. And you know, like the scripture says, be ready in season and out of season. I just thank the Lord for your obedience, brother. Yeah. I just, I'm telling you, I really do. His name is Pastor Rudy. He's a youth pastor at his congregation, and uh, he's going to be sharing with us his testimony. And uh, before he gets started uh, with what's the Lord doing with him, we're going to ask him to share his testimony uh, before you got Rudy, because I know, you know, you come up in the church, can, so can you share your testimony? Yeah, I, being born in a church, like you said, I uh, was a little everywhere, you know. One moment I can be listening to the word, next moment I'm running around the church, playing with the kids, and sometimes doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. And uh, growing up, being a PK, I actually, because of my mother, ended up going to a private school in the suburbs, living in the city. And up until, what, seventh grade, I ended up going back to the city because my father wanted me to, and you know, understand and get used to being around a lot of people of my own kind, because I was so used to diversity. And um, next thing I know, I was introduced to drug life, gang banging, thugging, sagging, cussing, and just a lot of different things towards the negative area where young people are more open to before they're open to anything positive. Mm. And it, it just, it was amazing to see how much of a transition I had made looking back. But going through those things, I had a way of balance, I could say. Um, my balance was music and things of the arts, drawing, painting, fashion, but at first, I didn't grab onto it. The one thing I did have was music. That was it. Uh, I was coming off the belly, basically, singing and playing instruments. Wow. And uh, I don't know what God it did to really say, this is it, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing. But somewhere along the line, the wake up happened. And I believe it happened what I'm 19 now so let me think probably like four years ago yeah four years ago I really wasn't serious um, going into high school and being in the Detroit system schools and everything knowing at that time it was really beginning to get worse and I had lost track uh, transitioning to a high school where I'm around no longer no Christians mm -hmm. and people who are afraid to say they love God and people who are more negative than positive, I begin to shelter myself and kind of hide who I really was. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, I was going to Christian schools and they taught me to stand out because you're light, you know, you're an intricate part of the world and you you are supposed to you know show yourself and when you walk in a room you own it because God is in you mm. and when I got in high school it was the other way around I hid myself and the only way I could do that was trying my best to fit in and even when I was doing that people would still get on me and tease me bug me bother me I still was dealing with everything and it amplified and magnified even when high school started. Mm -hmm. um, high school, my first year was really bad. Um, I was cussing out teachers, fighting, uh, getting suspended, mm -hmm. but even then I had a lot of favor. I didn't understand it. Um, it was times I was supposed to be expelled, but they suspended me and I never understood it. But after the, the school year, that ninth grade year, I really learned, you know, either I get a grip because I was falling in school and I still wasn't fitting in, hanging with all these bad people. And 
I don't know what it was, but I had told my mom, I said, I don't want to do high school no more. I want to go online school and let me try to get some music in. And I did that. I got in probably, what, the, after the first quarter of 10th grade year. Mm -hmm. They held me back, and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So it really made me want to rush out. And I went to online schooling for the rest of that year and also the 11th grade year. And going into the 11th grade year, online schooling was tough because I began to fall back on my work. Uh, home school, you know, you do whatever you want. They're not gonna tell your parents until it's like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Like you're falling out of place and you're not doing this, you're not doing that. We need to understand what's going on. And at the same time, I was doing music. So for me, I thought it was so something positive. I thought I was doing so good. And I had to look and get a reality check. And actually, I wasn't. So after that, I decided to get in a real school, alternative school, instead of um, a high school. Mm -hmm. And I had did that. And I found out I had no credits. After the first six months, I had a 3.2 GPA. I was a, it was a turnaround for me because I was so focused. And God was using me then. Mm. Um, by that time, this was like last year. By that time, I, I was in church. I was focused. I was strong. And the light in me shine more than my mouth would be open like mm -hmm. people would just say you're that pastor you you preached at so-and-so church didn't you and i i frowned it on that for a while because i didn't want to go in school with people knowing me and it, i thought i would lose focus but actually it was a turnaround for me it was a, a help for me just as much as it was for everybody else that I was helping. Mm. And I was shocked at myself at the end of six months. It was amazing. Wow. But uh, I just, I looked at it, the PK lifestyle is only difficult because of the PK. See, we have a lot of people who will say, oh, it, it's a hard lifestyle. They got it bad, this and that. It's really on the child. And sometimes the parents. If you shelter them or you, you uh, let them open too early, you're going to come out with a lot of problems. But if you have balance, your child will come out okay. Mm -hmm. Or they'll come out focused. They'll come out knowing what God wants them to do. And... Thank God my parents brought balance in my Amen. life. Amen. I was able to see on the early years Christian school, and, and that was pretty much foundation. Then going through the high school and middle school stage, I had fear. And going towards the end of high school, I was like, okay, I understand why I went through what I was going through in elementary, why they taught me these things, because these kids, they need to see people like me. Mm. So I began to really express myself through fashion, music, uh, social networks like crazy, uh, ministering, not, not afraid at all. I mean, different situations begin to pop up. and I mean, it was amazing. Mm. So let me ask you, Pastor Rudy, so were you like ministering to the people online? Uh, different, you know, when you said media and online, uh, were you ministering to them and yeah. Uh, things like that. Wow. I was doing that. I really, <clears throat> I always had the connections to open up to different people of different ethnicities and in different countries. But like going into early high school stage area, like I was just, you know, friending them, you know, oh, I like you, you like me, da da da. Trying to figure out what they're in my life for, but really not understanding the meaning. Mm. And after I began to really answer my call, I began to see why people were in my life in the places that they were. Like some people always can reach me on a telephone or on Facebook, but have the opportunities to see me 
never can. Mm. And I began to see that's the reason why they're in my life. I need to minister to them from that distance because I don't believe that God would have allowed certain things to happen. It would have detoured me and that person off their their course, mm -hmm. off of what God wants them to have mm -hmm. in their destiny. Mm -hmm. And after high school really kicked in, towards the middle of high school, I began ministering and ministering hard. I was not afraid. I mean, I was telling them about their parents, t down to names, cousins, dogs, mm. areas that they lived in. It was amazing. God began to use me. And even things that I would speak instead of what God had given me, I began to notice that, you know, our words are powerful. And when you have so much power for God to begin to speak to you and tell you, say this, say that, you have also have the power to speak things in their life. Mm -hmm. And when I would do that, things would happen within 12, 24 hours. Ooh, so it, it was an amazing change for me. Mm. But at the same time, I never noticed it. Wow, really? It just kicked in. It was like a, like a trait. You know how you'll wake up one day and you'll see a, a mark on your face and then go back to bed, wake up the next day and you don't see anything, mm -hmm. but you see so much glow in the mirror. It was kind of like that. Mm, okay. It was always something that would rise up every different day. And sometimes I would feel different things. Sometimes I would see different things. And I used to have a lot, well, I still do. I'm not going to say used to. I still have a lot of visions, dreams about people, even before I meet them. So, I mean. Wow. That's a powerful gift the Lord has graced you with. Yes. Wow. I'm even amazed, mm. even talking about it, because, like, sometimes being in a position that I'm in and being so focused, you can forget uh, all the, the abilities and anointings and talents that God has given you. Mm -hmm. But when you go back and talk about it and analyze it, it's like, wow, I didn't know. I, wow, I remember that. But man, mm -hmm. so it, it just even now, I'm not even like I'm just in awe mm -hmm. that God would use me because he could have used anybody else. Mm -hmm. He could have used the 12 year old from Africa. He could have used a drug dealer mm -hmm. on the corner. He could have used an old lady on her deathbed to do all those things, but mm. instead he used me. Mm. So it's a blessing. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. That's yes. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. I just, I begin to really realize that when you do certain things, and even without noticing what God is doing in your life, you begin to open certain traits. And with those traits, you have certain abilities, whether they're negative or positive. God began to use me in those ways, you know, as far as I have learned. He's not going to give me anything I cannot bear. So when I began to venture off in, into things that I was beginning to learn about people, he would just show me different lifestyles as far as high school. Mm-hmm. I wasn't uh, as familiar with the gang life, but God began to show me different things on brotherhood, different things on fraternities, different mm -hmm. things on oaths. And the next thing I know, I'm ministering to all these different young people wow, about all those powerful. things. That is powerful. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, you are arrow. Yes. Ooh. Go ahead, brother. You, I got, just, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God had showed me so many different things. Like I can go in different regions and feel oppressions and feel problems that these different young people or people are dealing with. And a little after I begin to notice by spirit what I'm feeling, I begin to see it. Like uh, I can go in a region and feel that it's a lot of lust in the area. Mm. I can go down the street a little further, I'll see strip clubs, I'll see uh, porno shops, I'll see prostitutes, I'll see pimps, and different young people of different 
you know, backgrounds walking and showing themselves in lustful ways, in lustful manners. Stuff like that. I mean, God began to open my sight. And sometimes I wouldn't ask because in my mind, I'd be like, wow, this is, this is a lot. You know, like, <laughs> man, what is this? You know, and next thing I know, I begin to say, okay, I understand. I need this because how can I minister to somebody and not understand what they're going through or mm -hmm. not see ahead of time what I'm about to walk into? And, I mean... It was amazing. I mean, all through the period of high school, that I'm, all this I'm talking about just high school. I'm not talking about nowhere near now. I'm talking about high school. Like, even growing in and having fear. I had so much fear because going into a, a place where you feel like, you know, being a PK, you'll feel like you're on top of the world. Everybody is focused on you, you know. Mm. All eyes are on you in church sometimes, and you're at the top of attention. And going to a high school, a public high school, where you're dealing with, like, what, 1,000 to 2,000 kids every day, it makes you feel so much smaller. Mm. So I thought, and I didn't know how to handle it because I had a lot of young people that was going to the same church as me, going to school with me. And I had a few of them on the basketball teams. They were popular. I'm walking in a new kid, knowing these popular kids. And they're looking like, man, we're not handing you no handout. Like, just because you popular at church don't mean, you know, you were somebody up in here. Mm. And I was, I was afraid. And it showed me the difference. You know, you could walk in one place and be at the top. You could walk in another and be right at the bottom. Mm. And it was a breakdown for me because I can honestly say I had that coming. I was arrogant growing up. Things, I had it. You know, I was like, okay, I want this. Can you get this for me? Da, da, da. It would come. But going into high school, I had to work for it. And then I had to learn, you know, how to speak to certain people. Because if you speak to them a certain way, they'll jump off. They'll be ready to fight or they'll, they'll be on the offense. And then you got people that start talking about you. And God began to break me down and build me up, Praise literally. Praise God, wow. And I did not have a clue what he was getting me ready for at all. But um, can I get in my testimony a oh, little bit? Oh, go ahead. However the Holy Spirit uh, is leading you. Uh, going into high school... Uh, the first year, like I said, it was okay. terrible. I, I was bad. I was really a bad kid. Um, then going into 10th grade, after I left regular high school, uh, I started doing online schooling with the music and everything. Wanted to give my focus, you know, music, ministry, and uh, fashion, different things of the arts. Not knowing which direction I'm going to go about it. Um, I began to get in church because I can't go to school. So I'm spending my time at home and with my mother, her being a pastor, uh, I'm going everywhere she's going. She's meeting different people, going to the hospitals, mm. praying for people, seeing healings happen, uh, then going to church early, watching her pray and watching her study. I begin to carry on those traits. So I begin to get in church and I began to get in music, ministry. I was always in church doing music. Mm -hmm. But this time, I mean, I was really, like, I was playing the drums. I was serious. I was playing the keys. I was serious. When she would preach, I would play behind her. Mm. And, I mean, God even gave me an anointing to do that because she would very rarely say anybody else to do it. Wherever she goes... I will go and play behind her. No matter the circumstances, if they don't have a keyboard, they got an organ, I'll play. Um, God just began to use me in ministry. I began to mentor young people at our church. Mm. And, I mean, it was amazing. Because I never would have thought, you know, I would have so much influence after being beat down 
called a fag because of the way I dress, called a, 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 a punk just because I didn't want to fight. Mm. In high school, not even a year ago from that moment, uh, God just began to use me to mend people with broken hearts, young people, um, seeing people with different problems and seeing how they want to be open, but a struggle between the household and school. And God began to use me and my mother began to see the influence and she put me in as a youth pastor, ordained me and ever since I've been on a, a slow rise. I could say in the beginning it was a slow rise, but after this last incident that really caused me to say, my eyes are open, Lord, I hear you. Whatever you need, I, I'm with you. You want me to crawl, I'll crawl. You want me to run, I'll run. It was, we all have that breaking point. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, my breaking point was going from high school and going to church immediately, like full-time church. Like my life was by the altar. I, I mean, I tried to get a job. It didn't work. Uh, when I decided to do um, alternative schooling, I was trying to find a job. And I had got an open door to go to Hollister. I don't know if you're familiar. Yes, I heard of that store, Hollister. Mm -hmm. They're very particular about diversity. Mm -hmm. And going in and like the... It was a two-week process. First week, they were adamant about giving me the job. So they're like, you know, come in and you'll uh, be trained on this day next week. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay, cool. I go in and they, they're like, uh, we changed the schedule to uh, Saturday, Sunday. I'm like, Sunday, I can't do it. I have church. I, I'm not going to miss church. I don't care what y'all got to do. If y'all got to move somebody and put them in my place just to give me a schedule on a different day, do it because I'm not going to be here on Sunday. So, you know, after going through that process, they did it and starting a the job, they fired me because they wanted me to come on Sunday. <laughs> and I said, no. And... I said, Lord, what in the world am I dealing with? I'm like, okay, everything that I'm trying to do is not working. Lord, I, I, I can't seem to find an opportunity for me to be myself. And at that time, I resented school. I hated school. And for me to have a, a great grade point average, for me to hate school is awkward. But... I mean, I, I wanted to find a job. I wanted to do music, and things just wasn't working at that time. I, I began to take my focus off of ministry and put it towards myself. Mm. And God was showing me that wasn't the time, that wasn't the place, and maybe that wasn't just totally the situation. So I lost that job, and the same week I found out I lost that job, um, after the semester, I had just turned 18. The semester ended January. I turned 18 February, February 2nd. And like two weeks after that, they're getting ready for testing, like MEEP and SAT. I didn't have to take it. Well, they told me I wasn't supposed to take it. So I'm like, okay, cool. They called me in for a meeting. They said, um, you have no prior credit. After six months, I have no credits. I said, so what was I doing here? Can y'all tell me what was my purpose being here other than getting the good grade point average? Because I had scholarships to Michigan State, U of M, Eastern, Wayne State for music, fashion, and academics. And that scholarship, you know, depends on how you finish. I couldn't believe what they were saying to me. And they had security in the room, everything. Like, they knew what I was going to do, <laughs> <laughs> acting out. And I, I couldn't believe it. They said, you have no credits, but you can drop out and go work for Ford. 
I was speechless. Wow. They said, you can stay in school for four years, and every year we give you five credits. You stay in four years for one class of math. I said, y'all crazy. I said, this, this is not happening. Uh-uh. I couldn't believe it. I was in denial. And then they turned around and told me to start a prayer group. They wanted me to start a prayer group with their high school. And this school was in Canton, the alternative school. And I don't know if you're familiar with that school system. No. They have three high schools on one campus, 7,000 kids. Wow. And you go from each high school to the next. They wanted me to do a prayer group with that school and the alternative school by myself. I said, uh, I know what God will do. He will give you uh, all the tools you need to get your mission done. And I said, I'm sorry, as, as good as the opportunity sounds, because I like challenges. I said, no, I can't do it without security or people that will back me up, that at least work in the school system. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. And I walked out. And I didn't even tell my mother, excuse me, what I was going through. Later that month, you know, I was going to school for what reason? Just to finish out the semester. And towards the end, they're pressuring on me, what are you going to do? Because we're not going to allow you to go another semester without making up the choice with what we gave you, the options. I, I told them, uh, you're going to have to give me some more time. Uh, so they told me I couldn't come to, to the school for about a week and a half. I said, okay, cool. And they were doing testing and all that. And my mom had came to me outside of school and was like, you want to go to Miami? I was like, yeah, I'll go because I can't go to school. And they're talking about I had no credits and this and that. And she was like, what, really? And she wanted to call up there and everything. I didn't let her. I don't know if she did <laughs> As or not. a mother would, yes. Yeah. You want to get with them. <laughs> yeah. So we went, we left, and I, I, I just began to cry out to God. Not hearing an the answer, but in faith, every day we were down there for like five days. No, three. The five-day thing was the flight. But... I wasn't hearing answers for like the first two days. Then the last day, uh, we went down to a beach, I believe it was. And I'm just watching the sunset. Angel comes to me in front of these different people and says, God says you're supposed to prosper. Believing in him will get you farther than what you already know. So start a record label, start a crew, start a choir, start a dance team, and start whatever, whatever businesses you want to do, and you'll, you'll never be broke. Mm. Three days after we got back, I took care of all that. All that. And up to this day, I have a choir, I have a band, I have a dance crew, And ministry had, that's a whole nother side, but I'll get into that. But like going into all those things, I'm in awe, like even now, because God could have entrusted everybody else, but he seen me and seen the dreams that I had because music runs through my family. Mm. It's I, I begin to ask my mom and different family members that are older, uh, what in the world is going on? Why all my cousins, I got like 57 cousins in total, my age, around my age, we all do entertainment or music mm. or worship or play or direct, sing, write, dance, do fashion. We all do it. In the arts ministry. Yes. Mm. It is amazing. I, I have never asked for this but what God did I have no clue mm -hmm. and I just told him I said Lord whatever you're doing I, I'll follow along Amen to that. <laughs> and 
Shortly after that, that's like Marchish, I believe, I got in a GD program. I aced all the tests. You got to take the test five times, five different tests, five times. I aced all of them. Each time they gave it to them, gave it to me. So they wouldn't let me take the next test because I was ready within two or three weeks. Uh, they made me wait till April. So I said, okay, without giving them a hassle, um, I went and took the test. It was the first week. It was the sixth and the seventh I had to take the test. I, I believed in God that I was going to pass. You know, I went in with good faith and I, I walked out feeling good, like I accomplished something. You know, I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm through, you know. I can go back to doing ministry and doing music. And I, I had good hope. And after I took the test, the next weekend, I was playing the drums and we were in like the third song. So we're getting into the worship part of the, the service. And I began to feel this pain in my head. And I, I just said, Lord, what in the world? I'm like, man, it, it began to feel like a migraine headache mm -hmm. immediately. And it began to slide all over my head, all over my brain. And I jumped up. I said, something ain't right. So I pointed at my security, my mom's security, and they looked, and they cued her. They said, something ain't right with Rudy. I jumped up before they even came close and went towards the back. And the way our place, or the old place was set up, it was like this. And the drums were here. The door was like not too far away from the drums. So I go towards the back and the door had shut behind me. I thought security was behind me. And I fell forward like down the first step. Something oh. grabbed me, picked me up, and laid me on the ground. Come to find out, well, when I looked up, all I seen was a long white robe go out the exit in the back. It's broad daylight. Our services are at three in the afternoon. And I'm like, what in the world? So I didn't say anything but pointed because I began to get in this position where I couldn't talk. It was, it was like pressure on my vocals to talk, mm. and then I couldn't move. Like I was beginning to feel paralyzed. And every time I would try to talk, it was like a thousand tons or a ton would be on my body. Come to find out, I began to have an aneurysm. It was starting to happen. And my mom was like, you know, get a towel, get water, you know. And I wasn't taking that. I was like, call 911, call 911. I'm crying, I'm screaming. And something clicked in her, take them to the hospital. So they picked me up, mom drove to the hospital, had somebody else preach. And the hospital was down the street. Uh, I could not walk at that point. I was paralyzed. Mm. I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. I could talk, but it was like I was slurring my words. Uh, they asked me who I was. I knew who I was, and they they knew something was wrong because I said something is happening with my head. I'm feeling migraine pain. Less than ten minutes later, I was on my way to surgery. I. They said I was bleeding on the brain, and I had two coils coming out of my head to drain the spine fluid and blood from what was loose mm -hmm. in my head. Mm -hmm. And the process of everything, thank God, which is really, I look at as a miracle, was three weeks. I mean, the doctors were saying all types of stuff. I wasn't going to be able to Remember certain things. I might not come out this situation the mm. same. I might not uh, be able to accept certain things, or I might have to learn how to walk, speak again. I will have a six-month headache, all sorts of things. 
And I remember waking up the next day after going through surgery and my mom was talking to me. She was like, I know you got faith. So talk to God, you know, share with him how you feel right now. Cause I didn't know what was going on. So later that night, I mean, I even had faith. I had mad favor through the whole time from um, three weeks. I had about 400 people come visit me and like 10 people per night would stay with me. It's only supposed to be two, let alone one mm -hmm. a night. But throughout the process, I mean, I had mad favor. It was amazing. So that, that first night I woke up, everybody was in the room asleep. They knocked out, snoring, all this other stuff. <laughs> so I'm praying and I began to cry out to God and this was the exact prayer that I prayed. I said, Lord, I come to you as this 18 year old young man seeing fit that you have your will done in my life. If you feel that this is my last day to be on this earth, have your will, have your way. I understand. I surrender. It's nothing that I don't want you to do, God, to get your will done. And I began to really accept the words that were coming out of my mm -hmm. mouth. And I began Begin to agree. I went to sleep that night and I woke up the next morning. So I knew that God had a plan, had a vision, mm. had a drive for me because I never would have thought, I never would have thought that a situation like that would have had to happen to break me mm -hmm. and my flesh, my pride and everybody else's because my youth ministry they were on fire before. Mm -hmm. I mean, these young kids, babies, speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. barely can talk, speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Kids ministering, laying hands on their parents, mm -hmm. speaking things, and they begin to happen. Uh, God began to use me in different ways, and then this happens. Mm -hmm. I, I said, Lord, whatever you're doing, whatever it is, I surrender. And at this point, you know, I don't know if I finished school. I, I really ain't branched off into my music ministry. Mm -hmm. All I did was church. I'm preaching and, and I'm traveling. And I had that summer, I was booked. I had 12 preaching engagements all over the United States. Mm -hmm. The year prior to that, I went to Alabama and did a preaching tour. And I don't understand. I'm like, Lord, what? Why? Like, and you know what? I came to subject. I said, you know what? No questions, Lord. I'm sorry. I repent. I'm following you. So for me, it was like a, a, a wake up call. You know, maybe I wasn't listening totally. Maybe I was, he gave me a glimpse of the ministry that I was supposed to have. And I just took it and said, you know what? Young people, I want y'all to try this, try that, do this, do that. And I was doing it out of my own will mm -hmm. for them. Because when God, it came to me, you know, as a leader, he'll give you a vision for the people you're leading. So I began to take that vision, I guess, in my own hands without seeking God constantly. Is this right? Lord, what's the next move? I began to go on my own heart. And in that moment, it began to stir these young people and then stir them away from, from God mm -hmm. and wanting to do ministry. But the only thing that kept them there was the fear and the respect that they had for me because a lot of them wanted to do what I was doing. I mean, because God would use me to the point where I would begin to do the music ministry and on youth Sundays, we shut it down. I mean, it began to get to the point, no music, everybody singing, everybody raising their hands. People are getting blessed. People mm. are getting healings and things are happening. I, I just, I never understood that. So for me, it was like a wake up call because I seen what I wanted was not what God wanted for everything, my ministry, the youth, uh, the church, because 
when you're in such an intricate part of ministry, I was doing youth ministry. I was doing the arts, the worship. I was a part of the adult band and assisting the uh, adult praise team. I'm 19. And <laughs> dealing with adults, you know, it, it was an amazing experience. And it was a fight. I began to you know, see why God had did what he did with the, the aneurysm, slowed me down. Mm. Because if I would have kept going, I would have stirred these young people into idolatry instead of worshiping him and giving him the glory. Because just because he's using a leader does not mean that, let alone, I get the glory that he deserves. Yeah, people might know my name for the type of ministry that I'm doing, but at the end of the day, God gets the glory. Mm, mm, and I had mm. to learn that through mm, that process mm, mm. of three weeks. Even in that, that three week process, we were, our church was actually in Dearborn. Uh, for a lot of people that may not know, it's the Arab capital of America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We dealt with a lot of Muslims. They would come and go in our church. They would step in and just watch. Then they would leave. Then the priest that they have, I'm not too familiar with what they call those people. The Mulan or whoever, something like that. Yeah, those people, they, they will come in and they will be like, we will hear your music, it's beautiful, we love it. Stuff like that don't happen. Mm -mm, but God. But God. Mm -hmm. And being in that area where that hospital was, I began to minister to the nurses, and most of them were devout Muslims. I mean, they they like, when you go in that hospital, they ask you, what's your preference? Do you only want Christians to take care of you? Mm -hmm. I said, no, mm -hmm. bring them all. Not knowing, I'm unconscious. Not knowing what I'm doing or saying. I mean, it, it got so busy for them to the point where they began to fight over the shift of dealing with me, mm. like taking care of me. And I mean, the it first week- It was drawn to the presence of the Lord that was on you. Cause at, at first I wasn't talking about, I never talked about ministry till the last week. Mm. They asked me mm -hmm. and that's when I began to open up and I mean, God began to use me. And like that first week, I could not walk. I had a catheter in, mm. and then I had coils coming out of my head. The second week, I had to learn how to walk again because I had lost 40 pounds, and I was always skinny. So to me, I was anorexic. Mm. Uh, going through that process, it was, it was really like another breaking down, like another breaking point. God began to literally break me down again for something I don't know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I began to see, you know, all those different things happen. Then uh, that third week, I'm, I'm going through with some of the nurses. They fighting with me. Uh, and I begin to speak things and they begin to happen. I begin to minister and they begin to happen after they walk out the room. And Three to seven of them gave their life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Devout Muslims turning over their lives. Mm -hmm. I never understood it. But that drive and that, that will, that, that moment where I said, God, have your way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just kicked in. Mm -hmm. And from there, last April of last year, from there up until now, like, I had slowed down on preaching mm. and I, I caught myself not having a drive to do ministry, wow. like preaching and ministering. I had a few engagements, but I felt like I was kind of turned away, you know, like I didn't want to do it. And then part of it, I had fear. And mm. Wow. But because the sake of time, Pastor Rudy, mm -hmm. could you uh, look into the camera, just minister? And then, you know, we want to yeah. see, you know, have the Lord minister with your music as well. Uh, pray whatever the Holy Spirit is, you know, leading you to say in regards to someone may still be struggling with the areas that the Lord has delivered you from. Okay. You know what? I hear God saying 
that the success level in your life has to rise up. Now let me explain a little bit. It's not easy to just make your mind say, I'm going to change. But what God is saying, go blind on him. You know, depend totally on him through whatever it is you're dealing with. The success level you think you're supposed to have is not the success level that God has for you. If that was the case, then you would know. See, God deals with people in the way of his vision for them without showing them everything, but just giving them enough to say, Lord, I'll lean on you for the rest. Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you. I've seen a little part glimpse. I, I want to do a little bit more. But God is saying the success level that he has for you, you cannot see. So you have to have faith. You have to believe totally in him. You have to break yourself. Say, Lord, okay, I surrender. I give up my will. I give up my way. I, I turn everything to you. No more can you go out and go off on people for your own things. No more can you step in the gap for your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, because they are afraid to speak up for themselves. No more can you step in the way of somebody in ministry. You have to allow God to use your success level the way it is fit. So now it's time for you to have faith, believe in him that the job will be done, believe in him that he will take care of everything else, because it's time for you to go blind with him and let him lead you the direction you're supposed to go. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let the Lord use you again, brother. Uh, just... Yes. So just kind of wrap up the show, Kim, and say, uh, you know, something about it. We'll end it with a, with a song or something like that, you know. We're in a nicer plan, but. Okay. Okay. So, and thank you for being on the show and all that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pastor Rudy, we want to uh, thank you so much, and I thank the Lord. Uh, My pleasure. You know, for coming sharing your testimony, and especially to show how the Lord can use a young man. Yes. A young man especially a young black man, you know, to minister, you know, to the youth and not only just the youth, but also the adults. I mean, you was even ministering to me and stirring some things in me, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to thank you so much for coming out and sharing and uh, we're just looking Bless. forward to you uh, ministering in song. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching and uh, He's, uh, Pastor Rudy is going to minister to us in songs. God bless you. So long, yeah. I've been trying to do 